Dream Center Church is a restoring place, a place where we make disciples of Christ, teach and train them to live as children of God, and to thrive into who He created them to be. We believe that this is the best time on earth to be alive, to experience the end time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Get ready to be renewed, recharged, and restored to go out and take the gospel to your world. Pastor Noble, I know he's uh, watching Pastor Johnson today, but uh, when you go back and watch it, we say we love you. We thank you. You and the Noble family. Let's give the Noble family, our senior pastor, a huge round of applause this morning. Thank God for him and his family. We thank God for our worship team. Let's give our worship team another hand. Amen. God bless you. The baddest band in the lands. We thank God for them. And to all of our visitors, we say thank you so very much for being with us on today. As soon as church is over, there's a room directly down the hall to my right. We want to meet you in that room. We want to love on you in that room a little bit. Amen, somebody? Amen. And to those who are watching us online, we say thank you so very much for tuning in with us. You could have chosen to tune in anywhere, but you chose to fellowship with us here at the Dream Center Church, and we appreciate you and we love you for that. There are some links that you may see on YouTube. Click one of those links and you can find out more about our ministry. Come on, let's stand to our feet as we go to the Word of God. Acts chapter 28, if you have your Bibles, Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28, if you have your Bibles. We're going to read about, about 10 verses. Amen, somebody? Hey, we're going to read about 10 verses. Thank you for that word this morning, brother. I appreciate that. Amen. Maurice, raise your hand, Maurice. Maurice told me I had 15 minutes. And so I need somebody to time me this morning. Timekeeper. It's 11 o'clock. We'll be done by 11.15. Maybe 11.20. <laughs> 11.30. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we love you and we thank you on this, on this morning for this is the day that you've made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Now God, we pause for a moment to speak to you because we need you to speak to us. God, I pray that you open up our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. And God, I pray that you breathe on me, your manservant. Give me preaching power from heaven. Allow me to preach in a way that you be glorified and that your people be satisfied with the bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. So we thank you, Father. I thank you, God, that my body might be tired, but I'm reminded of a scripture that says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I rest in your joy this morning. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Every heart said amen. 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 And amen. Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. I want to begin reading at verse number one. We got 10 verses now. It says, when they had been brought safely through. Somebody shout safely. We're going to come back to that. Then we found out that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us extraordinary kindness. For they kindled a fire and took all of us in because of the rain that had started and because of the cold. But when Paul, somebody shout Paul. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself on Paul's hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging on his hand, they began to say to one another, undoubtedly this man is a murderer. And though he has been saved from the sea, justice will not allow him to live. Verse 5 says, however, somebody shout however. However, Paul shook off the creature into the fire and suffered him no harm. Now they were expecting that Paul was going to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after a while, they waited a long time <laughs> and had seen nothing unusual happen to him. Then they changed their minds about Paul and began to say that he was a God. Verse 7 says, Now when the neighboring parts of that place where the lands belonging to the leading men of the island named Publius 
who welcomed us and entertained us warmly for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius was laying in the bed afflicted with a reoccurring fever and a century. Paul went in to see him. After he prayed for him, he laid his hands on him and healed him. Verse 9 says, after this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases were coming to him to be cured. They also showed us many honors. And when they're about to set sail, they supplied us with everything that we needed. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to talk very briefly with this particular thought in mind. And that is how to handle life when life bites you. How to handle life when life bites you. There is, in fact, a Hungarian physician by the name of Dr. Simowes. Dr. Simowes, this Hungarian physician, is known as the savior of mothers. It was, in fact, that in the 19th century, Brother Elliot, that there was a mass illness and sometimes women would just die when they were giving birth. But it was this brilliant doctor by the name of Dr. Simowes who looked into this matter to see why women would die when giving birth. And what Dr. Simowes figured out, that the physicians who were working on the women while they were giving birth were not washing their hands. And so Dr. Simon West, he made sure that physicians and doctors began to wash their hands before they worked on the patient. I feel the preach getting ready to come on. I know it's a little early right here, but, 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 but he, he, he made physicians wash their hands before they began to touch the patient. Because here's one thing that Dr. Simon West understood, that you ought to have clean hands, hello somebody, before you touch a clean thing. I know that's in the natural, but I believe the same thing also applies to the spiritual because I believe that there are some blessings that God has given us that we misuse, some blessings that God has given us that we wasted, some blessings and some things that God has bestowed upon us that we took for granted. Why? Because we touched them with dirty hands. I feel like preaching this morning. There ought to be somebody here this morning who can say, God, if you don't do nothing else for me, just make sure I live a life with clean hands. I'm not talking about soap and water clean hands, but I'm talking about spiritually clean hands because whenever God gives you a blessing, you want to make sure that you don't contaminate the blessings of God touching it with dirty hands. I figured you wouldn't get that because that's not the end of the story right there. But Dr. Simon was had another friend. Somebody shout he had another friend. Come on, shout he had another friend. His close friend was a guy by the name of Jacob Kolechka. Jacob Kolechka, he cut his hand while doing an autopsy. He cut his finger while he was trying to do an autopsy. And because he had a cut on his finger while doing the autopsy, he caught an infection in his body and he died. I'm trying to help somebody. That because he touched something that was dead and his hands was already dirty, it killed him. Hello, somebody. Aren't you glad? on today if you'll be honest that there's many things in your life that you touch with dirty hands but God still let you live through it that no I wish I had somebody who would be real in here with me this morning that I've touched some stuff that God has declared dead in my life I went back and picked it up the relationship was dead you went back and touched it God killed the addiction you went back and picked it up God killed some stuff but whatever you went back and picked up it should have killed you but the grace of God still let you live on today and I wish I had about 10 people in here who are testify Pastor Blue you ain't talking to nobody on my road you talking to me because I done went back and picked up some stuff that I should have left where it was but glory be to God he still let me live through some dirty moments as a matter of fact will you go ahead and high five your neighbor and say never he talking to me he talking to me you don't know the stuff that I done went back and picked up you don't know the stuff I done went and touched but the fact 
fact that God let me live through it, I came this morning to give him some praise. Do I got about 10 people in here who don't mind standing on your feet and giving God some praise this morning that he let you live through some stuff that should have wiped you out a long time ago. And God, if you let me live through it, I'm going to give you some praise because you allowed me to survive some dirty situations. That God has a way of allowing you to survive some stuff, even when you touch it with dirty hands. Look at somebody and say, God, just clean my hands, clean my hands, clean my mind, clean my heart, wash me as a white as snow. God, clean me. And you ought to be glad this one that he allowed you to survive what should have took you out. And that's what we see in this story. We see a brother by the name of Paul <laughs> who survived the snake bite that should have took him out. But before I get to the snake bite, let me moonwalk real quick and tell the story. Can I tell the story, brother? Somebody shout, tell the story, preacher. Let, 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 let me tell the story, Eric. <laughs> Paul is on a ship with some prisoners. They're sailing trying to get to Rome. Rome is the destination that they're trying to get to. The night before the shipwreck, the angel of the Lord, he comes to Paul and says, Paul, the ship is going to fall apart. But he says, everybody on the ship, y'all are going to survive. He says some will be able to swim to the land and others will have to make it on broken pieces, but ain't nobody going to die. God, I thought y'all knew when to shout that everybody on the ship, the ship is going to fall apart, but ain't nobody going to die. I know ain't nobody ain't good grabbing, but it's show good gospel. Look at somebody and tell them ain't nobody going to die. And that's what shouted me about this text, Robert, in verse number one. Because in verse number one of chapter 28, that shouted me, man. Because the Bible says when they had been brought safely, somebody shout safely. Understand what this means, that they just been in a shipwreck. they have been swimming through water, but they made it to the land safely. There were prisoners on the boat. Hear me. There were prisoners on the boat. There were sailors on the boat. And there was Paul on the boat. Did you hear what I said? That there were prisoners on the boat boat there were sailors on the boat and there was Paul on the boat and everybody made it safe somebody shout everybody everybody made it safely and when I look at this crowded room of beautiful people this morning that's what got me happy because I look around I say everybody in here made it safely yeah you don't know what it took for me to get here but I made it safely you don't know I had to sleep outside last night but I made it safely I ain't have no clean clothes to put on this morning but I still made it safely you don't know everything I've been through just to make it to the house of the Lord that's why I can't sit here like he ain't done nothing for me because I'm just glad that God let me make it here safe. How far of your never say, neighbor, I got here, I got here. No, tell him I got here safely. And since I got here, I ought to tell him, thank you. Y'all yo, yo, be seated. Y'all scare me. Get the picture. They make it safely to the island. Somebody shout, they made it safely. Some knew how to swim to get there. Others had to float on broken pieces of the ship to get there. I ain't got time to preach it. But don't judge me because I got there on a broken piece. I might have got there whole like you. But I'm so glad that God still allowed me to get there even on something that's broken. That's a sermon for another day. And so they make it there safely. Somebody shout safely. And when they get there, here's what tripped me out about the text. I got three minutes. I'm just playing. I got about 12. Here's what tripped me out about the text. Is that when they get there, the Bible says, Jamie, that it's raining and it's cold. And so Paul begins to help build the fire. And as he's building the fire, 
the Bible says that a viper or a snake, it lunged out and fastened itself to Paul's hand. Now, that, 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 that messed me up right there, brother, because I'm saying to myself, now, God, you just spoke to Paul in chapter 27, and you told Paul that you was going to make it there safely, that was nobody going to die, and Paul is the anointed one. How do you let somebody who was so anointed get bit by a viper? I forgot to tell y'all that there's 275 people on the ship. You mean to tell me that out of 275 people on the ship, that the one that was anointed on the ship is the one that got bitten by the viper? How do you allow the one who was anointed to get bitten by the viper? There's 275 people, including criminals. I could have thought of plenty of people to get bit by the viper, but not Paul. I say, God, why did you allow Paul to get bit, to get bit by the viper? He's the anointed one. And God says, I allowed life to bite him because I knew that he can handle it. But church folk don't know when to shout sometimes maybe God will allow things to happen to you because he knows you got what it takes to handle what you're going through. I came to encourage somebody this morning. Don't you give up on life. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you turn your back on God because God knows that you can handle everything that you're going through. Look at your neighbor and tell him you can make it. You can handle it. You gonna win. It bites the one who's anointed. And maybe you're looking at life from the wrong perspective. Maybe you're looking at life saying, whoa me. Why did it have to happen to me? Out of all the people that life could have been, why did life bite me? Somebody shout, why me? Maybe life is biting you because God knows that you're anointed to deal with whatever bite comes your way. Can I help somebody in the house this morning? The same way you got through the last life bite, it's the same way you're going to get through this life bite, and it'll be the same way you get through the next life bite, and just because a life bites you, that does not take away that of your anointing. You are still anointed. You are still blessed. You are still favored. You are still loved. You are are still God's child no matter how much life bites you God still loves you look at somebody say he loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so I don't care how much a life is biting God still loves you hey hey Roscoe maybe Maybe the viper comes out. Well, I ain't going to say that. I know why the viper comes. Can I tell why the snake bites him too? Can I, bro, bro, Jeremy, can I tell us? I, I'm not going to tell it until I get five people to say, tell me why I bit him. I'm going to tell you why I bit him. And it's right here in the text. Here's what the text says. Watch it. If you don't read it, then you're going to miss it. I'm going to show us why I bit him. It's right here. Somebody shout verse 3. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat. Six, six. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened himself on Paul. I'm trying to tell you why I bit him. It bit him because Paul was gathering sticks to make a fire. And when the fire got hot, it exposed what was hiding. And because the fire got hot and exposed what was hiding, it tried to kill Paul before Paul killed it. 
that sometimes the devil will throw stuff your way because he knows that what you're doing is getting ready to stump his head. So he'll try to take you out before you take him out. But I believe I got about 10 sanctified witnesses in the house who can testify that the devil ain't going to take me out. That's why he'll cause your body to get sick because he knows that there's purpose on your life. That's why he attacks your marriage because he knows it doesn't work for you to do it. But look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to get him before he gets me. That's why he wants your mind because he knows God has anointed your mind. That's why he wants your marriage because he knows your marriage is going to change lives. That's why he wants your children because he knows your children are going to change lives. So he'll come after so. But all you got to do is keep the fire burning, baby. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to keep the fire burning. Because when you keep the fire burning and when you keep it hot, it'll expose the enemy. That's why you can't be cold. That's why you can't be lukewarm. You got to be on fire, baby. Look at somebody and tell them, get on fire. You too quiet. You too, I wish I had a church. You too quiet. Get on fire. Start praying, start worshiping, get up here and dance, run to the altar, fall on your face. And when you begin to do that, it will expose the enemy. So, 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 so watch what y'all, y'all, y'all be seated up. I got you. Chef Nate, I hope you're almost done. Watch it. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Um, so, so the fire exposes, exposes the, the snake. The snake comes out. It fastens itself to the hand of Paul. Now, me and Maurice have had this conversation as well as Eric. They know I don't like snakes. I say, if I see a snake, I'm going the other way. Now, I know that God has given us the order to step on their head and all that. I get it. And I will if I need to. But if I see one right there, I'm not going to walk up to I'm going to go this way. Paul gets a snake on his hand. I like what Paul does. Paul doesn't start cussing. Mm -mm. Paul doesn't start complaining. Paul doesn't even say, ouch. As a matter of fact, Paul does not even give it any recognition about what's happening to him. Paul simply just shakes it off. Maybe the reason we still got life hanging on to us is because we keep giving it too much recognition. Maybe we keep giving it a name. Maybe you ain't healed yet because you keep giving your sickness power. Maybe you still broke because you keep giving brokenness power. But every now and again, it's just good not to even recognize it, but just shake it off. I want to talk to some people in here who got life happening all around you. But can I prophesy to you? All you got to do is just shake it off and watch the glory of God begin to stand on your behalf. Do I got about 10 people in here who can say, I just need to shake it off, shake it off. Shake off your depression. Shake off your sickness. Shake it off right now. It can't stay on you when you shake it off. Because sometimes when life bites us, we give it too much power because we keep on entertaining it. Paul doesn't cuss it out. He ain't mad at God. He just simply shakes it off. I'm waiting on somebody to get it right now. Somebody going to get it after a while. See, see, the, the, the reason why many of y'all can't fit is because you want to stay in what you in. 
but there's about five of y'all can say, you know what, I, I ain't come here to stay in what I'm in. I came here to shake something off this morning. Because whatever, whenever life bites me, I don't want to walk back out these doors with whatever I walked in here with. But do you believe by faith that you can walk out of here better than you walked in? I dare to believe by faith that God can heal you, that God can set you free, that God can make a way out of no way. Do I got any faith walkers in here who believe that God can? Hey, hey, wa wa watch this. I'm going to tell you why you need to shake it off. Can, can I read the Bible? Y'all yeah. like the Bible? You like the Bible? I like the Bible too. I can't preach unless I'm reading. But here's what the, can I tell you what the Bible says? Yeah. Watch this. You ready for this? You sure? It says, verse 5. Um, when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they began to say to one another, Undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. And though he has been saved from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. In other words, when he got bit, people start judging his bite. That when life happens to you, there are people watching you to see how you respond to what's biting you. That's why you got to do what Paul did in the next verse. Verse 5 says, however, he shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no harm. Because there are people who are watching your experience and they're waiting on you to fall. They're waiting on you never to get up again. They're waiting on you to just go away. They're waiting on you. That's what the Bible it says it right here. Verse 6 says, Maurice, but they were expecting that he was about to swell up a suddenly fall dead. That when life happens to you, there are people who expect you not to recover. <laughs> They're expecting you not to bounce back. They're expecting you just to fall over and to give up and to cry pity party. They're expecting you to just roll over and play dead. But look at your name and tell them the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. That is not the God that I serve. And whatever you thought I was going to do, God is going to allow me to listen to not meet your expectations. But he's going to let me live through your expectations. High five your neighbor and say, keep on living. Live past the hate. Live past the hurt. Live past the harm. You just got to keep on living to prove people wrong. Just keep living. Look at them and tell them, keep living. No, for real. Tell them, for real, keep living. Outlive people's negative expectations of you. Who told you that you couldn't make it? Who told you that you had to give up and roll over and play dead? Who told you that you got to live in the same situation that you're living in right now? Get some strength about yourself. Shake it off and stand tall. You ain't got to live like that. Shake it off. Watch, watch it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Because remember, remember... Their destination was Rome. I'm going to say it again. Their destination was where? One more time. Their destination was where? Rome. But look where they land. They land in Malta. Come a little closer. Um, the destination was Rome. Because... God has a way of ordering your steps to your destination. Anybody glad about God ordering your steps? Rome was the destination. But they end up in Malta. Because here's what I love about God. Is that yes, God orders our steps. 
but God also orchestrates our stops. The destination was wrong, but they had a divine stop in Malta. Okay, you're going to get I'm going to say that one more time. The destination was wrong. That's the orchestrated destination. But then God also orchestrates a stop in Malta. What if I told you that where you are right now is just an orchestrated stop on the way to your destination? I'm trying to help you change the way you see your life right now. If where I am right now is an orchestrated stop on the way to my orchestrated destination, then that means that I ain't going to be where I am always. Okay, church, four don't know when to shout, do y'all? That God may have just orchestrated a stop on the way to your destination. So what are you going to do while you at your orchestrated stop? Look at somebody and tell them trouble don't last always. No tell them for real, trouble don't last always. This is an orchestrated stop on the way to my destiny. And while I'm stopping right here, I'm just going to tell them thank you. While he got me stopped right here, I'm just going to give him glory. Now, while he has me stopped right here, I'm just going to tell the Lord I love you. Because I ain't going to be here always. So you better get a good look at me now. Because of what you see right now, you might not see me like this the same time next year. Because this is just a stop on the way to where God has for me. I got to go. I got to go. Watch it. So, I told y'all, the viper latched yourself on the Paul. They're looking at Paul. They're ready for Paul to die. They're expecting him to die. He outlives their expectation. And watch what they do. They immediately, because somebody say keep living. No, say it again, keep living. So watch this. Because Paul kept living and did not die, can I tell you what the Bible, I like the Bible. Can I tell you what the Bible says? Well, watch this. Um, but they were expecting that he was about to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after they had waited a long time and had seen nothing unusual happen to him, here's what the Bible says. They changed their minds about him. Because when you keep living, you will change folk mind about you. As a matter of fact, I ain't even got to say nothing. Just watch me. I ain't even got to do, just I'm, listen, I'm going to outlive every negative expectation that society has put on me. And I'm going to make the world change their mind about how they see me. Some folk may see you homeless, but God sees you housed. Some folk may see you broke, but God sees you rich. I wish I had somebody in here. Some folk may see you, but if they don't see you how God sees you, then you ain't got to come into agreement with what they say about you. All you got to do is outlive it. Watch this and I'm gone. It says, I like the Bible, Jamie. It'll preach all by itself if you let it. But after they waited a long time, and seeing nothing unusual happen to him that changed their minds and guess what they began to say? That he was a God. Paul ain't God. I ain't God. You ain't God. But can I tell you what they probably was thinking? They probably was thinking, well, maybe this brother might be a God. But here's what Paul knew is that I'm not a God but what they do see it's the God in me. <laughs> I wish I had about 20 people in here who can say, I don't care what you know, but you're getting ready to see the God in me. 
Is there anybody in here other than me who happy on this morning that your life may not be perfect, that you may not dot every I and cross every T, but you excited this morning that God still lives in you. How far you never tell him it's a God in me, it's a God in me, it's a God in me who's working through me. Oh, okay, okay, be seated. This is my last thing I'm gonna say, and I promise you, Alicia, I'm done. Last thing, and I'm done, okay? It's 11:33. I'm gonna be done by 11:36. Starting now. Watch it. Remember. I told you that the viper jumps out, Jamie, and it latches itself to where? His what? Say it one more time. His what? Okay. So the viper latches itself to his hand. Can I go back? I like the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, now the neighboring parts of that place were lands belonging to the leading men of the island named Publius, who welcomed us and entertained us warmly for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius was laying in bed, afflicted with a reoccurring fever in the century. Paul went in to see him. And after he prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. Okay, you missed it. When Paul was building the fire, the viper jumps out of the wood. It latches itself to Paul's hand. And then when we keep reading, we see where Paul uses that same hand to heal somebody. Maybe God brought you here this morning to tell somebody that the places in your life that have been pain are the same things God is going to use in you to heal somebody else. That you've been, you listen, you've been tripping over what's wrong and God says, I want to use what's wrong as your ministry. You've been tripping over your misery and he says, I want to use that as your ministry. Do I got about 10 people in here who don't mind setting up on your feet and say, God, I want you to use me any way you know how. That everything I've been through, use it for ministry. Use it to be a blessing to somebody. You might be homeless today, but God is going to use you to be a blessing to everybody else. God is going to use you to help lift people because you've been down. And God has a way of taking your misery and turning it into your ministry. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop listening. Stop having a pity party. No, this is what God wants to use for you to help change the environment around you. Will you let God use you? God wants to use the thing that's been biting you in life to be the very thing that he uses for you to be a blessing to other people. The thing that's been hurting you, the thing that you've been complaining about, God says, I want to use that. Because those people, watch it. Paul had a snake bite and he survived it. But then there's a man who's laying on the bed sick, about to die. Because I don't care what situation you're in, there's always somebody in a situation worse than what you're in right now. And so instead of you complaining about the situation you're in, you ought to be looking for somebody who might be in a worse situation and you ought to lend your hand out because what you may happen for other people, God will make some stuff happen for you. (laughs) 
I want to pray for you this morning. Will you come to this altar? Come to this altar. I want to pray for you because I don't think you understand how anointed you are. I don't think you understand the favor that's on your life. I don't know who made you believe that God has left you and that God has forsaken you. He has not. And sometimes life bites us because we're anointed to handle it. We just haven't changed our mind about our situation. But I'm going to pray for you today that your mind gets renewed. And you see yourself the way God sees you, anointed. I want to take about a minute as our worship pastor ministers to us. And then we're going to pray. Come on, this altar, come on. Lay it at the altar, lift your hands. Yes, come on. I love you. Come on, sing it with her. In such a special way, come on, sing it. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. And I magnify your name. That's why. That's why. Is filled with praise. I love you. Do you love him? Jesus, I love you. Do you love him? I love you, Lord. Today, oh, because you care for me. In such special way, and yes, I praise you, and I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Oh, yes, I do. That's, That's why. why. Father God, we love you and we thank you on today. God, we thank you for these your people who've come to this altar because maybe life has latched on to them and it feels like a snake bite. But God, we thank you through your word today that now they're able to see that they can survive anything that comes their way. That all they have to do is just shake it off. And so God, today at this altar, we shake off depression. We shake off mental illnesses. In the name of Jesus. 
We shake off sickness in the name of Jesus. That nothing can have their way with your children. And so God, we're at this altar this morning. Hallelujah, God. I feel your renewing minds right now. God, we're at this altar right now because God, somebody needs their mind renewed. They need their mind changed about how they see themselves. Somebody told them that this is who they are. But I'm glad that your word says something different. That your word declares that they're the head and not the tail. That they're healed by your stripes. Your word declares that they can turn away and walk away from sin and they shall be made whole. So we thank you, Father, that we're made whole this morning. Do you believe that by faith? Come on, do you believe that God can make you whole by faith? Open up your mouth. Do you believe that he can make you whole? Somebody shout, God, I believe. Come on, shout, God, I believe. Come on, shout, God, I believe. Shout at God, I believe. I believe that I'm made whole. I believe that I'm made well. I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I'm set free. God, we believe you this morning. With no doubt. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every heart said amen, amen, and amen. Now, if you're happy and you know it, put those blessed hands together. Come on, hug somebody on your way to your seat. And if you want to stay at this altar, you ain't got to leave. I believe. 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 I trust you, Lord. I lean on you. And not to my own understanding, Lord. I believe. I believe. I believe you. Oh, I worship you, Lord. 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 I you Lord can anybody say we thank you Lord listen we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord 
For you are good. For you are good. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For you are good. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Let's put those blessed hands together and let's give God a hand clap of praise. We're getting ready to go. Everybody's standing. But if you're in this place and you're saying today is a good day for me to give my life to Christ, will you just raise your hand right where you are? Just raise your hand. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. Keep that hand raised. Keep it raised. Amen. Keep those hands. If you raised your hand, keep them raised. Keep them raised. Keep them raised. My brother James is getting ready to come grab you by the hand. He's going to take you in the room over there. Keep that hand raised. Amen. Follow. Will you follow Jamie? Amen. Follow Jamie. For those who, amen, follow him right now. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. You might be in and you saying, you know what? I need a church home. And I want to be part of this ministry right here. If that shoe raise your hand, I want to be part of this ministry. I need a church home. We got an awesome pastor, Pastor Noble. He loves you. You got an awesome team here. We want to pray for you. If something happens to you, you need a church that will cover you. Amen, somebody. If you need a church home and you want this to be your choice, just lift your hand wherever you are. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. We're getting ready to eat. If you're a first-time visitor, if you're a first-time visitor, just lift your hand, first-time visitor. For first-time visitors, will you do me a favor? Shannon, will you hold your hand up right here? Hold your hand up. Will you come meet Shannon down here? And she's going to walk you to the room as well. Our first-time visitor. Will y'all give our first-time visitors a hand? Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Meet her right here. Meet her right here. Amen. One, two, three, four five amen somebody she's gonna take you to the room we have a gift for you we have a gift for you and we thank you so very much for joining us on this morning have your hearts truly burned with fire this morning have your hearts burned with fire this morning to those of you who are watching us online we say thank you so very much we pray that your heart has been filled with the love of God and we want you to know that you can shake off anything that life throws your way as we get ready to go and set up and get ready to eat, I want us to pray, pray with the food, and then we'll get ready to fellowship more with one another. Amen. Father God, we love you and we thank you today for our eyes I've seen and our ears I've heard. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you that folk left stuff at the altar this morning. They shook it off. We thank you for those who gave their life to Christ this morning. And so, God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, we pray that you bless this food, allow it to be nourishment to our bodies. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, every heart said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, hug five people. Tell them you love them and don't you tell them no lie. Consider yourselves dismissed. Thank you for being here with us on The Voice of Healing. When you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, join us for our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service. Our website, restoringplace.org, has all the details on how to find us. While you're on our site, check out ways you can volunteer at the Dream Center. Need someone to answer questions about us or pray with you 24-7, call our prayer line at 704-246-4595.